Good morning. But if we're getting better, I'm going to try that good morning again because I think people were still sleeping. Good morning and happy Easter. Good morning and happy Easter. Ah, now we're awake. Now we're awake. Sounding much better. Welcome uh, to everyone to this, our Easter service. Um, there are a few uh, announcements. I haven't been told anything in particular needs to be stressed. So uh, is there anything that anyone needs to come forward and announce at this point? Thing is good. So there are a number, number of items, and I, I know that I did see that the uh, there is a bunch of meat pies available, uh, taken from experience. I have some in the freezer at home. They're all gone. Because I, well, I said okay, they're they're all gone there, Barry. Because I noticed he had the the thing up on the on the sign. It's in the bulletin. All gone. I'm glad I got still some at home. Okay, okay. So that that. Thanks for the update. We'll just keep on trucking from there. And uh, as we uh, continue to share and... Okay, I guess the piece of paper is down there. So, so today we acknowledge the land in which we reside upon from the 46 and a half treaty, the Ashabaka Nation. We continue to remember them this day and acknowledge that we work together in peace and harmony this day and every day. And as we acknowledge their presence and the presence of those here, let us acknowledge the presence of Christ in our midst as we light our Christ candle. And as we begin our service, let us join together in our call to worship. The day of resurrection, we lift our hearts with joy. Let us from death to life. Hallelujah. A day of resurrection, we will with hope. Christ has led us from earth to heaven. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is risen indeed and is now joined together in our opening prayer let us pray god of resurrecting power you lift our hearts with joy when we see the tomb is empty god of resurrecting hope you fill us with excitement when we hear that christ is risen god of resurrecting love you embrace us with courage when we trust in the power of new life that you promise in the risen Christ. We offer you all glory, honor, and praise with hearts overflowing. In Jesus' name, amen. And let us join together in our opening hymn, and we are glad to have Kaylee with us today to share in with the trumpet. Let us join together with the hymn, The Day of Resurrection. <laughs>
only child I see is a big yuck bear. And I don't even see him. So I know he's up there. Uh, I was going to read God Gave Us Easter. So if you want to check it out sometime, it's a nice little story of a bunny and his dad. All right, so we're all children at heart today. Go ahead and read the book. Go ahead. All right. We'll all enjoy it. God Gave Us Easter. I love Easter, little cub said. Me too, Papa said. It's even better than Christmas. Better than Christmas? Why? Because on Christmas, we celebrate Jesus' birthday. But at Easter, we, rem we remember we get to be with him forever. Forever? Forever. That's why God gave us Easter. I like the Easter bunny, cried little cub's little sister. And candy, added little cub's little brother. The Easter bunny is like Santa, Papa Bear said. He reminds us of gifts, happy surprises in the morning, but God is the one who gave us Easter. Easter is part of a bigger story he had in mind for a long, long time. How did God give us Easter, Papa? Well, see this egg, Papa said? It's a symbol, helping us remember, just like the shell cracks open and a chip comes out, we remember that Jesus was in a tomb, but he didn't stay dead. He didn't? No, even death couldn't trap God's son. He is, he is life itself, and God loved us so much that he wanted us to be with him always. We can see signs of his Easter plan all around us. Little, little cub and papa went on a hike. They found a big tree that had fallen over in a storm. God told his people that Jesus would come from one family, the root of Jesse, he was called. Jesse and his wife had children, and they had children, and they had children. And one of them was Jesus? Yes, little cub. God knew he would give us Easter all along. It's sad this big old tree fell down and died, little cub said. Yes, Papa said. But when it did, it made new room for little trees to grow. So how the sun See how the sun shines now without those big branches blocking it? And how all the pine cones fell across the forest floor. These pine cones will spread their seeds and maybe trees will grow like this one. Out of death comes life. That's how God wants us to see. I still don't like dying. Neither do I. We were born to love life. God loves life. But sometimes we have to let go of one thing so that we can move on to another. For instance, think about this river. Where, where, where does the river go, little cub? To the ocean, little cub said. He loved the ocean. Yes, the river ends, but it spreads into something even bigger. Heaven is like the ocean for us because God gave us Easter. We can be part of something bigger. And even though we talk to Jesus now, in heaven, we will see Jesus face to face. Couldn't Jesus have just waited for us in heaven? 
A long time ago, God's children, children wouldn't listen to him. They didn't even believe in him anymore. It made God very sad and angry. So he sent a huge flood to start anew with Noah and his family. In that ark were full of, in that ark were full of bears and giraffes and monkeys and turtles. And when the flood was done, God promised never to send another one. Phew, little cub said with relief. That's good. Little cub liked water, but he liked land too. It is good. After the flood, God gave us a rainbow as a sign of his promise. But when his children, who said they'd follow him, were disobedient again, he had to find a way to keep us connected once and for all. God wants nothing more than to be close to his children. So Jesus keeps the promise we broke, little cub, and because of him, God forgives us when we make cho bad choices. All of us, everyone who believes in him. That's how God gave us Easter. Do you talk to Jesus, Papa? Every day, Papa Bear said, all day. In a way, it's like he whispered in my heart. In your heart? I, I thought we listened with our ears. We do, but we hear Jesus. But to hear Jesus, it takes a special kind of listening. Little Cub was silent for the rest of the walk home. She was trying to listen with her heart. She listened, and listened, and listened. That night, Papa and Mama tucked her into her bed she was, when she was still listening, and her parents kissed her and hugged her, and she turned over and remembered she was God's child too. In that moment, she felt comfy and cozy and cared for, almost as if Jesus whispered, you too, Jesus, the little cub whispered. Thanks for giving me Easter. The next morning, the little cub said, Papa, I think I heard God last night. You did? He said, putting his arm around her. Well, that's the best Easter present ever. What do you say? I love you. Hmm, those are good words. Perfect really are what Easter is all about. It wasn't about the bunny, it was about the little bear. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. It's great to have that story. We're all kids at heart at some point, so thank you very much. The last week of Jesus' life began with celebration, a celebration of his royalty, his sovereignty, his deity. Palms were waved, cheers were raised, spirits were high, and voices loud with praise. Only Jesus wept for the city, saying, If you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes.
The last meal of his life began with preparation, the preparation of the Passover supper. The disciples went ahead to prepare the room for the meal they would share. Their hearts were full of love and adoration for their savior and friend. Only Jesus knew the agony that was ahead of him. And when he broke the bread, he told them, this is my body given for you. The last day of his life begin with prayer, prayer for strength to carry him through, prayer for his disciples that their faith would not fail, prayer for deliverance. The disciples fell asleep, exhausted from the sorrow. Jesus continued to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, yours be done. Oh, 
The disciples mourned the death of their savior and friend, trying to make sense of what had happened. Their eyes had seen a king, but their hearts were confused. How could their king have been put to death? What would become of the promised kingdom now? They didn't understand. They didn't understand his teaching or remember that what Jesus had told them. The Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. They were afraid, scattered, clinging to a faith that was being tested to its limits, searching for answers in the comforting words he had left with them. They didn't know how, but they knew they would see him again. For Jesus had promised, I am going away and I am coming back to you. With the dawn of resurrection on that Sunday, their hope was renewed, their faith was rewarded, their Lord was risen. God's great love had conquered even death, empowering them with the fire of God's spirit. Their eyes had indeed seen a king, the king of glory, the risen savior. Risen never to die again would reign in their hearts. His love would shine through them, reaching upward to heaven and outward through thousands of years, spreading the message of salvation, reaching to us even today. Only Jesus rose victorious from the grave. Only Jesus conquered death and hell. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Let us pray. <clears throat> pray to God in these moments as we continue to allow us to shine through us. As we meditate upon your word, may you open our hearts to his understanding this day and always. Amen. Sermon title is Change Plans. I guess we're going to skip the sermon. And the choir's coming back up, and we're going to go through again. Yeah. <laughs> it only takes a few moments for us to reflect on our lives and realize how true the saying is. It's the little things that make a difference. Little things could have kept us from doing things differently. They may have enabled us to meet our future spouse, or meet a close friend. The little things may have opened up a job opportunity that would have never been available to us. For myself, going to an 80th birthday party and then getting a simple little telephone call from Lillian, well, you know the rest of the story. That's why I'm here today. Little things that make a difference. But if little things made a difference in our lives, imagine the impact and the significance of that first empty tune and the resurrection of Jesus, not just on the, the women as they went to the tomb, but even on all of us today. Even though this is an event distant from us in time and space, still has the ability to transform our lives just as it did to the lives of those first believers. The women's plans were changed. They came to the tomb planning to grieve. They were going to express their grief by handling Jesus' body and better preparing it for burial. Because the time constraints on Friday, they were not able to bury him properly. So in the midst of their grief, the women arrived at the tomb, but things were changed. They found the tomb was empty. The stone had been rolled away. And they heard the angel tell them they didn't need to be afraid. Now, if you were going somewhere expecting one thing and got there and the 
dead opposite happened, I think I'd be a little bit afraid of what was taking place, especially in that time, because when they left originally, there were Roman soldiers standing on either side of that tomb. And in those days, you didn't play around with the Roman soldiers. It was a scary scene. The angel continued to say, Jesus has been raised from the dead. He's no longer in the tomb. I'd still be scared. This discovery changed the plans of the women and would eventually change the lives of the disciples and everyone since. Their grief was ended. The embalming spices would be used on someone else. They weren't needed. There wasn't a body there. And they were then given a new mission to tell the disciples. What are they going to tell the disciples? Oh, we went, and it wasn't the way we were, it was supposed to be, uh, and, and we saw a person there, and now we're afraid to tell anybody. We're really not too sure what's happening. Their lives would be forever different. And they were still questioning the fact. They still did not fully understand and if you read in Mark's gospel, it says that they went away from the tomb, even though the angels said, fear not, they were still afraid. Because who do we tell, and what happened to him? And if we say anything, are we going to get blamed ourselves? There's a lot of what-ifs happening on that first Easter morning. But they were left with a cliffhanger. But we who live in this age know not only did the resurrection of Jesus change the lives of the women and the disciples, and we know the rest of the story, it changed the world in which we live. The women and the disciples, however, had to live out each day learning the difference about the empty tomb and the resurrection of Jesus and the difference that it had on their lives. You know, in our own day-to-day -day journey, we are tempted to get caught up in life and to make our own plans to set our own goals and our own agendas and to kind of seek to do our own thing but if we really think about it sometimes those change, plans get changed because the empty tomb and the resurrection of Jesus breaks into our lives when we least expect it, just like it did the women at the tomb. And our plans get changed. Sometimes they say we have a, a set course ahead of us. About a year and a half ago, when Goy Rocks for Congregations closed, I thought I'd retire. And probably not do much. <laughs> so much for that idea. There was a plan. The plan was changed. I'm not too sure what, I at the time didn't know what that plan might be, but one thing led to another. So there are times when life changes our plans for us. We might lose a job. We might have the opportunity to move. And I know some present here are in the process of doing that. We are challenged 
by some changes in our health. Or we experience the death of someone very close to us that does change our plans. All of these force us to possibly go in a different direction than what we were thinking. And in the middle of all these forced changes, as our story talked about today, we hear a little voice in our heart. And thank you, Martha, for that story. That little voice that says to us, remember the women at the tomb? Remember the resurrection of Jesus? Remember that I am present with you to give you hope and strength to face the changes and deal with them in a positive manner. Our plans get changed, but it doesn't just leave us out on the edge of the cliff to hang there and wondering what we're going to do. As Jesus met the disciples, as he met the women later on when they did not recognize him, he in many ways put his arms around them and said, it is me, do not be afraid, for I am with you. It is the presence of the empty tomb and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the season of Easter that enables us to state with certainty that all things work together for the good for those who are called. Usually we do not like change. But today, because of the change of the Easter morn. Christ brings good news to us. And like the women that day at the tomb, we go forth from this day with changed plans, but still really not knowing what lies ahead. Change plans because we understand the presence of Christ in our lives whispers in our heart and says, I give you peace and hope and love and strength. And Jesus invites us on an adventure, an adventure to experience tomorrow like we've never seen it and the next day like we've never seen it. But also promises that he walks with us and leads us. The empty tomb and the resurrection are not simply distant historical facts. They are daily realities that Christ is present with us. And it affects our lives today, tomorrow, and in the days and months and years ahead. For we hear these words as we sang in the cantata. Shine, Jesus, shine in the hearts of everyone that we may go forth from this day, in the knowledge of the resurrection, in the knowledge of the joy and excitement of those hallelujahs. He is risen. He is not here. To shine in the changes of life because of what we experienced this Easter day. Yes, the plans may be changed. But Christ walks with us. He did not stay in the tomb. 
but he journeys with us this day and every day. To the joy of those who listen. Let us pray. Creator God in life, we find that our plans do get changed. But we fear not. For you walk with us. And you are present. Because we know the good news of this day. We know the news of the resurrection and the empty tomb. Continue to walk with us from day to day. Strengthen us when things are changed and challenge us to shine so that others may know the knowledge of this Easter day. For we ask it in your name. Amen. As we prepare for our morning prayers this day, are there any joys and concerns to share with us today? Um, recently, Bob and I were uh, cleaning out our computer room, and we found a disc of Joseph which holds some absolutely wonderful memories of Melville and was something, so I'm thinking of people who changed my life when I think of that. We also, and someone we met at, through that experience was Glenn McGinnis, who had a very, very significant change on both Bob and my life. We did several plays with him. Um, something I never thought I'd end up doing in my life was co-writing a play and co-directing a play, which Glenn gave me the opportunity to do because of changes in his life. He was suffering from Parkinson and he wasn't able to meet an expectation that he had set for himself and he asked if we would help. And so I did something that I never thought I would be able to do because my mentor helped me. So I am also thinking of him for those of you that don't know, Glenn passed away recently. And we also found a disc of Akai and a disc of him singing the songs that he had written for Akai, which we will be sharing with Karen. So I am thinking of changes in my life and people who changed my life. And many of them are sitting here. <laughs> um, yeah, this isn't exactly a joy I don't think that's the right word but it's certainly gratitude I thought I could do this I just want to say thank you to all the friends in my Melville family for the phone calls, the cards, the visits, the flowers during the last few months. I've really appreciated the support. Thank you. We have some birthdays this week. Norm Hart and John Duncan celebrate their birthdays on April the 2nd. I believe it's Tuesday. And Lori Wright celebrates her birthday on Wednesday. Maybe we could sing to those people. Yes, Shaughness was last week and KV Andrews turned 93 last week. 
<laughs> Turn it around, 39. Oh. Bob, you were trying to say something? Okay, okay. Shall we sing it again? <laughs> you got it, got included, okay, Joanne. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Talk about changes. Um, I, instead of celebrating with my kids and my grandkids today, and we always do an egg hunt tonight. We do games at my grandma at, at grandma's house. Um, I'll be driving down to Montreal to see my brother, who's now in intensive care. And it's a change of plans for sure. And I thought the other day when I was so worried, I thought, you know, this. Maybe this was how my siblings felt when I got cancer. It hit me. They must have been very, very worried. Now, I don't think this is going to have a good outcome. But I know that just being there with him and being able to touch him will be enough for me to celebrate the wonderful life that he has had and the love that we all have for him. His, um, his stepdaughter called me yesterday and she said, you know, he's not better. And I said, I'm coming. And I said, how are, she said, how are you? And I said, how am I? How are you? And she said, I'm okay. And I said, well, I love you, Kenny. And she said, I love you. You know, I want to just thank you for your brother. I want to thank you for the best dad I could ever have had. So that's my change today. But I know that I'm not alone, and I feel the family of Melville with me. So thank you for all your prayers. saying anything, especially when I knew Martha was going to talk about her brother. <clears throat> but it, it does relate, you know, seeing Eleanor and, and, and so much in this church. Um, a dear friend of ours that's been for at least 35 years, Kay and Ray, um, they live in North Vancouver. Ray died a few years ago. And Kay is in the vicinity of, of Peggy and, and some of those in her age, but she lives alone. In the last week and a half, she's gone way downhill, but not getting medical help because she can't sit up to go to emerge or a walking taken. The doctor, the family doctor, can't see her for two or three weeks. So I'm hoping I can talk to her, her son yesterday, who comes by every day, and, and said, call an ambulance, please. Just get her in, let her lie down. And, but she's, she's been a really important part of our life. And why I wanted to bring her up today is that Ray and Kay, I consider the quintessential United Church people. They volunteered for years at um, First United with all the downtown and east side of Vancouver. Um, they lived here and, and came, closed their whole life to move to Vancouver because their son fathered a, a, a daughter that he didn't have anything to do with afterwards, but they gave their whole life up to go look after this child so that the mother could go back to school. And now the da her daughter is fabulous. She's a lawyer in New York. But 
this quintessential United Church is what I think is the very best. And I know, I know there are many quintessential ones here too. So I'm thinking of Kay and also thinking of the medical people there and, and looking after Martha's mother. I just consider it a wonderful joy to have heard that lovely music sung so beautifully by the choir. It was just lovely. And thank you. Also, Lily Rome. Thank you so much for the flowers, the flight, and sanctuary. Thanks so much. Anyone else? I was trying to take some notes. I'll probably leave somebody out of the prayer, but I'll, I've been trying to take notes the whole time. as then focus our hearts and minds into God in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we come to you this day, a day of resurrection, a day of hearing the words, he is risen, he is not here. And so we come this day thanking you for your presence with us, O oh God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we come this day, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together in this place, to hear the beautiful voices of the choir, to lift our own voices in praise, to hear the words of concern for others. To hear the music, the organ, the trumpet. And we come this day to see the beauty of nature in our midst in the decorations. And we thank you that we may come on this Easter day in fellowship, in love and joy, to celebrate with those who have a birthday, to agree with those who have lost loved ones, and to shed a tear with those who are concerned for family. We come to allow your light to shine through us so others may know of that same love. And so, gracious God, we come before you now and we lift our prayers unto you and ask a blessing on those who are celebrating. We continue to ask for your strength and those who are traveling in this time to be with family and friends. We thank you for the difficulties that you have, have brought through people through in health. They're able to be here today. And the blessings they receive from the family of Melville Church. We continue to pray for Kay, Martha's brother, and others who in body, mind, and spirit need your strength, the special people who have touched our lives, who have changed our lives in so many ways. We pray for the medical staff in all areas of health care in our province and in our land. And we come this day with joy of the knowledge of the resurrection, the joy of the empty tomb, and the joy of knowing that as things change, the one thing that doesn't change is your love, O oh God. A love that transcends all understanding. A love that whispers in our hearts, I'm with you. And now in the silence of our own hearts, we lift our prayers to you, O oh God.
Lord, hear these our prayers and continue in your love to answer. Continue to walk with those who need your strength. Continue to be the knowledge of the resurrection, the one that we can count on in the difficulties of life. And in grateful thanks for all that you have given us, we return to you now as we join together in the prayer you taught us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, Deliver us from evil. Find us a kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as we continue to give God thanks this day, let us now present our offering. Eternal God, we thank you for eternal life, for the empty tomb. And now, as we give thanks for what you have given us, we ask for a blessing upon these gifts. That they may you be used here and beyond to tell others of your great love. We ask now for your blessing on these gifts, on this offering, and upon their use on our work and witness in your name. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go into our, our last uh, hymn for today, I want to take this opportunity to extend uh, Easter greetings to everyone. It's great to be back with you today. And I know it maybe wasn't the type of service that we thought maybe we were going to have today. Sometimes Easter is joyous, sometimes it's not, but I believe a change for today was what was needed in the hearts of those who are concerned for loved ones and for the life of this congregation. And as we close off, we're going to have something a little different today. We thank Kaylee for sharing with us with the trumpet. And uh, we were practicing the other, well, they were practicing, and I was listening the other night. And I said, you know, it's nice to hear the organ and the trumpet without us drowning them out. So they're going to give a little bit of an instrumental before we start singing. And let us now join together and our next hymn, Thine is the Glory.
And now as we go forth this day, continuing to know of the risen Lord, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and remain with us always. Amen.